Thank you very much, Leon, for those very, very kind remarks. You know, uh, I want to squelch one rumor. It's not true that on that last flight, NASA would not let me make a spacewalk because they were afraid of my age. I might wander off someplace. <laughs> it didn't happen. <clears throat> but I think we should have NASA happy birthday. Nobody said that yet tonight. <laughs> happy birthday, NASA, 50th. Some of us here this evening, we're at the beginning of the days of NASA. It had been preceded by the old NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Neil, that you'll hear from a little bit later, of course, uh, I think even predates me with uh, association there because he was flying for NACA uh, at Cleveland and out in the desert, out at Dryden Space Center, or, uh, Dryden Center, uh, NASA Center. Uh, even before I became a, a member of, uh, of the group. Uh, we go back to where the old headquarters was off the corner of Lafayette Park, and that was where NACCA was uh, headquartered at that time. A single house over there, and that was the, uh, uh, that was the headquarters for NACA. You know, if we could just stop and say, what do we think are the couple of things that made this country great, that let us develop in a very short period of time, in just about 120 years, into the leader, leading nation in the whole world? Well, if you thought about it for a little while, I think most people would think, well, education, that became general in this country. It was for everybody. It wasn't just for the privileged or those kids from the castle, as it might have been in, in previous ages. But in this country, education came to be for everyone. But number two then would just about have to be the fact that this nation put more into basic research, basic fundamental learning the new things first. And that's what took us then from a, a country over here separated from most of the rest of the world, and yet we became a world leader in about 120 years. In my view, the old NACA and its subsequent uh, successor at NASA just exemplifies what I'm talking about with that. The Wright brothers in 1903 made, a, made the first flight when other nations were trying also, but following that, our nation decided as a government to do basic research in this new, area, new era of flight. And NAC, NACA was formed in 1915, and they looked at, at airfoils and aerodynamic shapes. They put wind tunnels with high and low capacity. They looked into structures. They looked into handling characteristics of airplanes and, and spins and all the things to do with aviation, including such things like metallurgy for engines, so they became more reliable. And then that had a spin-off of its own into such things as even made those metals available for longer lasting plows on the farms and for new bearings for cars so you didn't have to wait so long to, to break them in. And then I think the what happened next was that the private investment in this country took over with what those facts were that the government had sponsored through the old NACA, we had companies come out that were like Martin and Lockheed and North American, Douglas, Northrop, Chance Vought, and of course, Boeing, which became the supplier of airliners to the world and opened whole new vistas that just revolutionized uh, world interests with their ability to take people and travel greater distances in a short period of time. And we had World War II and all the, the thousands upon uh, thousands of airplanes that used that NACA data to make the world's greatest air forces in whatever service they served in. And it, was, it all came about because of some of that NACA research work that had been done, done earlier. Well, that's the NASA heritage. NACA went out of existence after Sputnik. President Eisenhower decided that we needed somebody to get into this act ourselves. We were behind. And so it was President Eisenhower that sponsored NASA, and it became not NACA, but the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And that was added to the other NASA missions. 
And so we started the manned space program about 50, well, exactly 50 years ago, and it was in the depths of the Cold War. And we remember very, very well the Soviets claiming research and technical superiority to the United States. Thousands of students being educated in the Soviet Union and sent back to their countries. Us trying to play catch up. And their boosters worked and ours too often were blowing up on the launch pads. So they had beat us into orbit. But we did come back. And we came back in Mercury with the suborbital flight in 61, the orbital flight in 62. Gemini told us how to run, taught us how to rendezvous. Apollo with Neo made that incredible first step on the moon that you saw in the, the footprint a little while ago. I always get goosebumps every time I see that thing. One, in 1973, we had a space lab. And it started real big-time research, not just traveling, but big-time research. And started us out on a track of benefits that would benefit us right here on Earth. In 86, we were brought up short because we were reminded of what a dangerous business this can be if we're not careful when we had the Challenger and all of that accident at that time. In 98, we started the space station and later in 98 we had a space station and later it became the International Space Station with 15 other nations with us and became a long-term research into benefits of what would accrue to people right here on Earth if we just used that new laboratory of space which we'd never had the opportunity to use before. We planned, NASA planned at that time to get into biotechnology combustion research, fluid physics, fundamental physics, materials science. But in January of 04, the president announced, the president directed a new mission for NASA. It was to go to the moon and to Mars. And everybody went along with that. I went along with that, thought it was great, except for one thing. The money didn't follow. We had no plans for new money. And Mike Griffin, that you'll hear from later, was given what I viewed as an almost impossible job. Do everything you're doing now at NASA that's worked out so well for the benefit of this country, but add to it just a couple of little projects like going on to the moon and to Mars. Well, he had no choice but to do some things like cutting research in certain areas. So today we have a station up there that's just about to be completed, completed in a year or so. We will have spent a little over $100 billion on it. That's B, billion dollars on it. But we're not using it for the type of research that we should, we should use it for because we don't have the money for that. I've always viewed space flight as being of two purposes. Both of them are research. One is macro research and one is micro research. And I think they go hand in hand, or should, if we're to get the major benefit out of everything that we do in space. Macro research is the exploration, going out farther, learning how to go to different places, just the traveling to different places, and what we learn just from doing that and from building the facilities and the spacecraft to go to those different places. But along with that goes the micro research that I think is equally important. But we have to save more on that uh, to, to even do any of that research now. We're even having to cut out our own transport to the International Space Station for a number of years after we retire the shuttle in 2010. Well, that sounds a little gloomy, but I certainly remain an optimist, even at this late date, to be able to get more money to restore what I would see as a balance, and which I think most people would see as a better balance. It's an appropriate follow-on to NACA and NASA's past. That past, but it's also the key to America's future and to America's continued world leadership. Where we go in exploration is certainly important, but what we learn and benefit from each of those steps along the way will benefit every man, woman, and child in our nation and eventually around the world. The next 50? Who knows? But I'm convinced it's going to be great. Happy birthday, NASA. Thank you.